Okay. Um, so this is a just basic introduction about Docker and how to use the Docker with first API. So anybody can uh, explain me what is a Docker? Anybody has experience with it? Why we use Docker or container per se? And what problem does it solve? So it uh, removes the dependency on, on a particular platform. Like our software may might run, uh, like it, it should not be dependent on the platform itself. Like some software runs on uh, like Windows and some runs on Linux. So it removes the such dependencies. Okay. So basically what we can do in current days, right? We basically uh, use containers, right? What is container? It's uh, similar to a virtual environment. But there, but there is like a uh, VM box, but there is like a distinction between a VM box and a container. So it creates an abstraction over your operating systems and the application dependency, your OS kernel, and on the hardware. Okay. So it's like a single unit of deployment that you can deploy. And also, it's what problem does it solve? So it solves a problem like we generally have issues right with the environment related right in it works on a my machine is not what the case is so basically the same container what you build or what you create in your developer box can be moved or progress through the dev qa staging etc okay so container can be moved across and they will give a consistency in terms of the operating system or minimal version of the operating system that we need to run on. And obviously, like these containers need to be executed on a physical hardware. So that hardware we define separately. Okay. Now, where do these containers are do reside? So every container needs to be deciding either on the public repository or private repositories, right? So what the repository container repository is about, container repository about is storing the container images and from that particular image it creates a container instance so most of our in our system right uh, we are using windows correct so here if we need to run our container in which is mostly in a linux boxes so what we have to do we have to create a virtualization enable so in our system, there is what we have is we have Linux for Windows subsystem or WLS that has been installed. And also on top of that, we have the Docker binaries and the corresponding command are available. Okay. So here in generally, we use with a desktop client that is Docker Rancher. Here it integrated with WSL, which provides the Linux distribution for Windows. And then there are like different build processes that you do. It creates a images that are there to be created out of the build process for the container. Now, what are the public container? We most probably know that public containers are the Docker Hub is a public container. And in case of a AWS, there is the Docker EKS repository or the ECS repository that is available where you can store just like your artifact or your code artifact. We have GitHub or Artifactory, you can store your Docker images build that you can store there. Okay. And then in our case, we're going to be looking into how we can, you know, develop an application. Okay. So what is the container consist of and how we can define that particular container. So here I have like three examples that we are currently working on. These are three different services in a mono repo. One is content intelligence image service, then content intelligence taxonomy service, the content intelligence text service. Each of these services are the first API services. And there are two files under this that are related to Docker is the Docker file and Docker components. Okay. 
So to build a container, what kind of information I need to provide? I need to provide the information about, say, for example, I wanted to run a PostgreSQL server, right? Or maybe MySQL server. So what I need to provide? I need to provide I need to provide a particular container which has the PostgreSQL binaries. It can have the any other configuration, default configuration overrides that can be there. For example, it need to override the normal local that is using, okay, or the database engine in ODB to some other database you wanted to change, or any kind of MySQL INI configuration that you wanted to override. So that configuration override I can place. And also I can place any starting script apart from whatever you know we can use as a part of this. Okay. Now so it's so container need to be run in its own isolated environment. And it needs to be provided with all the packages or dependency it requires. Right? And then, and we can use a one command for running any container is the docker run. That will do is the, it pulls that particular docker image in your individual developer boxes from your private or public repository. And then it can start running with the default ports and other configuration that is there. Now here we are going to be creating a our application development will be running within the Docker. So as an app application developer, what we need to do? We need to provide our artifacts, that is our source code in case of Python source codes, any kind of configuration, or we wanted to also provide your dependency management requirement.txt, et cetera, that we can provide. And we can rebuild a particular, with those configuration with the source code, we can build a container image and then the container image goes to the operating team or the devops team who then create the infrastructure and on the top of the infrastructure they use either ecs for running those container in the cluster so how you can you know define this um, what are the dependencies or what are the container configuration will be there etc so now this developer and operating teams both can be work on the same container file right that is in our case as we are using docker it is known as a docker file and they can change different things like environment variable etc and every docker image is basically consisting of a particular layers so first you need to start with a default layer okay and the, on top of the default layer, what you have is Linux base layer. So in the Linux base layer, we basically choose Alpine or Busybox, some kind of minimal Linux, you know, distribution size, so that our Docker images are less in size, and they can be easily can be used. Okay. So let's see our example. The one is our text service. So in this text service, what we have is we have the Docker file. So in the Docker file, we have chosen a base image or the base layer. That is our Python 3.10.4 with a slim bullseye. So that is like a minimal distribution. There is also other minimal distributions like Alpine. Okay. After that, what we do is we create an application users. We are not going to be running this application under the root user. This is the one of the best practices you can follow. Here we have created a group and then we added the user to that group. Then we created a particular working directory under root slash code. And then we set up some environment variable like this, what is this, buffer, what is the environment it is, whether we are testing. So that can you easily configure in a NV file. Okay. So when you're going to be running this particular Docker command, Docker run, <coughs> this particular file, right? First, we have to build this. Okay. When you're going to build, 
it will create an image and from that particular image you create an instance of a container okay now here we are using next will be is our this is our current location so in our current location we have a department which having like a different requirement that we will be recording in running our application so we're going to copy the requirement text from our physical location this is the left hand side is a physical location then on the right hand side as we have chosen the slash code is our my working directory there underneath that we copy this file so that copy command is move file from physical to the docker internal environment or file location then obviously we're going to be running the pip install update pip. then we're going to be installing the requirements that are necessary for running our application now my all of the application source code is under app folder that my api authentication core elastic search model module schema etc so all my python code are out here which are the source code not the test cases so i'm going to be copying next is the app folder into the code app then comes my and this particular app folder have it the details of my source code now what next i have to do next i have to do is i have to put a run file that when the container do starts which particular file it will be using to execute the command so for executing command we have created a run.sh so run.sh is setting a few default value like the app module is saying that it is by default app under app folder there is a main and there is like a app method that will be executed first okay so that is my this is the app object that need to be executed so internally where which port this application will be run it the application will be run on this post and if this particular host environment variable is not mentioned when you're running the docker then it will be able to accept the request from all the ports right and it's going to be fine internal port that is 8000 right so 8000 port it's running and also you can put some of your backend course origin the location from which it can be executed now here as we are using first api so you are using unicorn <coughs> and it bound to that, that particular port and the host combination similarly when you're going to run this this internal host and port combination also be exposed at least your port combination port need to be bound to the external port either you can bound to the same port that is 8000 or you can bound to any other port so when you are going to be running this localhost 8000 then it will be run in a different port module and then you put the app module and then you put say this are like the workers are going to use for evicon workers now after you copy this file across so this is like in a windows system right so obviously we need to put executable permission into that so any kind of command i wanted to execute linux plus command i going to choose ch mode plus x then that particular command right now python path by default said that this is like a code that is our root code that is there okay now then I change the ownership of the particular home location to everything to the app user that I have created at the first. Then after that, we choose to switch to that particular user. So it is like non-root user. So we choose the user as app user. Then I use command and I've already copied the run.sh. So run.sh start executing the application out here okay okay so how can i build this i can build this using docker build 
by default it's having like a docker file so i don't have to mention the file name if i'm using anything non-standard file then i have to use the file switch and i have to bring with the file name. so when i build basically it creates a particular docker image and that particular docker image i'm going to be able to see out here okay which is like 2 gbs of size okay then the other things are there so here also our application is using elastic search so that particular um, uh, you know elastic search dashboard as well as elastic search index i can run in separate docker images that i going to be imported out or pull out right but that will be easily uh, done and there is like a dependency on this so my before my application start my application need to be dependent on the elastic servers to be up right so in that case what happened is i can use another file that is there that is known as a docker compose so what is the docker compose does it basically allows you to build the particular multiple images either that you have built or that is like a public image that you can build and then with that you can create dependencies between them you can choose how the network layer will be you can also map volumes so for example i'm using mongodb or elastic search so what happened is they're going to be having to need to store the data of their indexes or their collections, right? So here, they're going to be storing the data internally into a specific folder within the Docker container. But that particular folder need to be mapped to the physical folder of your operating system. So that mapping you can done using volumes, okay? So let's see what is this uh docker compose file does it allows you to compose or combine multiple docker images mention the dependencies overriding the environment variable port mapping and uh, many other things right so here if you can see this is our first image that the services version 3 we are using the services the name we have given for our text service is the contain intelligence okay then how the service will be built it will be using the docker file and where the docker file is located it is located into my context or the current working directory then you can give the container name so when you run our docker command right or run command it basically takes up any arbitrary name for your instance right you can give it like a, your container or instance name specifically now i'm coming to the depends on but first see that internally when we run our run dot sh, we have run our application internal to our port 8000. Similarly here you can you know map the port to 8000 to 8000. So that means it's going to be occupying the port number of your host property system is 8000. So after that if you wanted to access any of the API, you can call localhost 8000 and the API endpoint you can call. Now, next comes is the environment variable so in our case we have the dot env files right and here we have different things like what is the server host name what is the project name description what is the version right what are the cost endpoint it will support locally what is the secret key it will be used to create a query token then from elastic cache host which port it should be running what is the username and password what is the index name right what is the default search time in terms of pagination and also there are some it has been integrated with first so what are the first url cookie url token url introspect url etc and the false corresponding client id client secret grant type and the minimal search scores that need to be there so those are mentioned out here so similarly in the docker uh, compose those environment variable we can if we want we can try to override okay. 
So here with the environment variable in a YML file with the key value pair, we have overridden those environment variables that are currently there. So if I want, I can move to a different environment of POST and integrate that and text it out. Now here I also require that open search project that is I require the elastic search. So in the elastic search, we have two things. One is the elastic search dashboard, and what is this, the elastic search node? So here we do not want to build any kind of images. It is like a public image. So we're going to be downloading the, with the latest stack. And we give a container name that is dashboard. And also we map the internal code to the external code and expose the code. Here also we have say that okay, this elastic search dashboard has a need to know where is the elastic search host is working. So we pass that environment variable the host name. Here you can say multiple host name if you want. And then that particular volume we have mapped uh, not to the physical to this particular files and then given a normal network. So everybody is within the same network. So obviously these images are run and you're going to find that they are not getting connected. So in that case, if they are not getting connected, is that is happening because they are most probably running in a different network. So by default, when they run, they create their own network. So if there is no common network, at least the network name, no other configuration is required. So if we say this is the network, I decide externally. And then I say that this is the network every container should be using. So they can able to communicate with each other. And there are two ports are bound out here. And in the volumes, we have mapped the user share the default location where the Docker image will store the data, right? Then they're going to be mapped with the a particular open search data or folder that will be created and it will be mapped directly. Here you can you know put the memory log or number of files that you can put out here for the open search that you can put the limits as well. As the open search is run, it has its own environment like cluster names, no type, those kind of things are being added out here. And then by this way, we have this particular environment is running. Now, how can we use the Docker Compose to, you know, up these, build these images, run these images? We can check it out. So let me first get inside the content intelligent text service. So here I can put Docker Compose. First, we're going to down whatever that is there. So what is going to be removing? It's removing all the three containers. And also, it removes the network that they are using. OK? So everything is clean out. If, say, I made some changes and I wanted to just wanted to see if I can do a build, let me try to build this. So that will create the first container image and it will execute all the command that is mentioned there okay step by step it's going to be resolving the dependency it's going to be adding the run the message it's creating the app users then it's going to be also modifying those change changing the ownership and then at the end it also going to be executing the start.sh or run.sh, whatever you want. So this way you can build that particular image. When you build that particular image, you will see that into your rancher dashboard, which is a different tool that you can use to run the Docker instances.
So Docker uh, desktop and uh, Rancher desktop are similar things, right? Yeah. But recently what happened is that Docker desktop has been marked for commercial, right? So okay. in kind of like an office environment, you can use the Rancher desktop, which is not exactly as its replacement, but it's like a uh, desktop tool that you can use. But in a uh, you know, non-commercial or local setup, you can still install the Docker okay. desktop that is there. That's it. Okay. After that, what you're going to do after the build process has been completed, we're going to be doing is the Docker Compose app. So it will create all the necessary containers. And currently, if I check by simply using the Docker command, there is only this image is that currently running. That is the build image that is going on. Okay, that is currently building the image. And after that, when it turns, it's going to be stop executing. And when I'm going to do up, then what's going to happen? That depending on the number of services, I want to see the C, the three services has been up. One is the contain intelligence, one service, one is open search node, and another service is the open search dashboard. Then I can also use to use the normal URL with the port number, I can access those in point as well. So any other questions? Still we waiting the dependencies to be downloaded. In the open search node, uh, so uh, I see the two ports have been mapped. Uh, can you just explain that one? Yeah. Yes, this is two. Hmm. So one port is well, 9200 is basically what is required where you connect and you execute your open search API commands, right? Either REST API Another is for performance analysis that is the nearest other. And when your dashboard is also connecting, right? This is your dashboard, right? So your dashboard is also pointing to the 9200. And from that dashboard, you can you know search, see the indexes whether there are some values are there or not. Okay, so now let this particular uh, build get complete. So we're going to be seeing that these builds are being updated out here, right? And also some unnamed. Uh, these things are there. So these things, like your open search and open search dashboard, they only going to be pulled only once, right? Even if you build it, right? As long as they are in the particular in your image. If they are not in your image, you are building for the first time. They will also be get downloaded because here the Docker image they have mentioned that okay, this is the image you have to use. Take more minutes. So, any other question on how we can use uh, our Docker in our tool? Any kind of Python container if you want to control it? So, regarding the image that we have used, open search dashboard. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh i i was like uh, i wanted to know like uh will it will it uh, again and again uh like uh, download the image or use it from cache if you don't make any change to the docker file uh no unless we are choosing a different version it will not want to do that that's it so it is actually pulled from the public repository okay okay so once it is downloaded for the first time i run so then it will use the cache or it will download again like it will, it will use the cache okay because here it is not downloaded it's only build the current image okay for her application now if we go back to here and if we wanted to search for these images we may find there are like 
different versions are available. So this is like from the open site project that what we are using in our local. And within the open search project, there we have the dashboard and the notes. And within the dashboard, you're going to find different tags. So different tags will say, what is the file size? What is the compressed file size? How before it has been built? What is the operating system and uh, CPU architecture it's supporting? So that you can choose from. And also there are like the version tags if you wanted to pull a specific version that you required. Okay. So it are current day is downloaded properly. So like we are using Docker Compose up so and when you're done, we are stopping that. Similarly, in our case, there will be another image that we are pulling out is the open search project, open search, and here we are choosing a particular version number. One point three point one. Here, if you can see, most probably there will be another tag that is being added out here. Now also, in our case, we are using Python 3, right? And this Python base image that you have taken out here. If you go out. So it's just simply Python and their version number. So this is like an official Python image. And there are like different versions are available. Default version is something like, uh, in case of your Linux version is 340 MB. So your base version is 340. On top of that, it will have other things, right? Similarly, as we are using here bull sites, it is like 340. That is, and also in case if you are wanted to use the Buster image that is going to be having like C35.55. So depending on the different versions, also you have bullseye version and other 3.9, etc. You can also look for the 3.10. So your idea will be whatever you choose your base image, it should be smaller in numbers of size of MB. Okay. So any other questions on this? If not, then we can close the session. At least I hope it gives you a basic idea how to use Docker and Docker Compose. So you can want, you can contrarize your Python work. Sorry, the one last question. So uh, the content intelligence takes service, and so this is running as a separate service. And if we need to communicate with the back end, uh, front end, so like I am saying, like there is a back end, there is a front end running in different containers. So uh, in how the uh, like uh, networking happens through volumes only. No, no, networking happens only by using the network. You put them in a common network. Okay. Out here, you define a network and you use the network that is common. No specific configuration is required. Okay. Okay. And then you are running in this particular port, right? So mm -hmm. they can be open on that particular port. Okay. 
So let's see if we can able to run this. So to run this, what you have to do is Docker Compose up. Before that, let us also see if there is any container is running. No, the build process is done. So build container that was running the build process has been gone. Now we are going to say Docker Compose up. So first the network been created, and now the all the nodes have been created. If there is any issue, those particular nodes will not be run or turned on. That is the open search node and the open search dashboard will be up. And you can also see the logs that have been created during the container start time. Here will contain intelligence also been starting up. And your contain intelligence is actually mentioned that it is depend on open search node. So first the open search node will be created, then the corresponding containers will be stated. Now if I look into this, now we can see there are like three nodes are currently running. Here you can see the Container IDs, those are basically the unique ID that have been assigned. The image, that image that has been used to create this. Then comes the port mapping, which port they have been mapped to. The TCP port, or ICP port they have been mapped. That has been shown. Next come the command. So it is like port, then run.sh. Okay. Then you have the open search dashboard, then open search dashboard, it's note, etc. That will all been up. Now here most probably your open search project has been not started up. That's why it's showing the status exited, but these two nodes are up. So if I wanted to check, This is the swagger endpoint being up out here. Okay. But I don't think that dashboard is most probably up. No, dashboard is not ready because the dependent container is not started. Zero, zero was the port. So there might may be some problem, that's why it is not. It's not able to find that particular port, that's why it is not up. And if you can scroll up and we can see what is the issue. The issue was the VM max map count is low so that is that uh, we need to implement using the uh, command line so here we have readme file and in the readme file what we have out here before we start this container is supposed to be go and connect with the demon that is in our Laptop is Rancher Desktop. After you get access to the Rancher Desktop, what I need to do is I need to increment the max map count. Then I can again up this container, and then I want to be seeing this. This has been updated. So what I'm going to do? This container is currently running. This is the logs. I can open up a second terminal or command prompt. I'm just going to be closing this Docker Compose down. Okay. So I can also close this by 
Docker Compose like Control C, but it is not a graceful download. The container will be removed, but your network and volume may be there. So when you again starting up, it's going to be having an issue with that. So if I make it down, okay, I have to go inside that particular folder, contain intelligence tech service, then I have to down this particular piece. So currently, the, all the container are removed. I can again check that out here. If the container are done, nothing is there, right? Now again, I what I can do, I can again start them. Now this time I'm going to find the all the three containers are running. It will take some time to be getting up. So first the dependent container will be start up, then your normal container will be up. And we can check if they have all been started up. So all of them are showing as up. So here I can go and see the open search. It's not yet up. Okay. It has again failed. So showing its up, but it has somehow failed. Okay, it's not able to connect to connections. What is seen? That's why it is not up. Neither this one is up. Now this is showing as up. Let's see. So here your database is up. Okay. This server is also up. So all the servers are now currently up. Okay. Any other questions you guys have? Here is also we have some data that is there. Okay, and this is in the contain index. Okay. Any other question you guys have? Or we can close the session. Let me know. No so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.